I'm going to show you step by step how to recover lost files from a partition on a Windows hard drive. This video is sponsored by Wondershare Recoverit, which can recover up to 100 megabytes of lost data for free or all recoverable data with a license. I'm going to see how much deleted data I can recover from a data partition on my hard drive after the recycle bin has been emptied. I'll start by downloading Recoverit from this web page. You can get to this same page using the link provided in the description below. Since I'm using Windows, I'll click on Download for Windows and save the file. If you are using Firefox, your download will be in the upper right. If you're using Google Chrome, you'll find your download in the lower left. I'll go ahead and click on the downloaded file and that will begin the install here. To avoid confusion, uh, close or minimize your browser. And in the lower right hand corner, you'll find customize install. You can change the language if you like, but an, a, another and very important consideration is to think about where the files that you want to recover are. If they're on drive C, you don't really want to be installing to drive C. In fact, if you have uh, a large number of files on your main drive that need recovering, uh, the best procedure would be to pull the drive out of your computer and uh, get something like a USB enclosure and bring that drive to another computer and install recover it on that computer and run it to recover from the USB enclosure, the, the, your drive uh, in the enclosure. The reason for this is whenever you've lost files, they've been deleted or whatever, uh, that space is marked as free. And if you start installing things, you can overwrite your files. And, you know, of course, depending on how critical they are, uh, that could be a total catastrophe, right? So um, just keep that in mind uh, before you proceed. In my case, uh, the files I want to recover are on a different partition. They're not on drive C, so I can go ahead and install there. If you do have another partition and you don't have access to another computer, to minimize impact, you can always uh, you know, change the drive C here to drive E or whatever your data partition is and install the program to there. So at least the program files, etc., will be written to another drive. There will be some temporary file activity elsewhere on C, but at least you can minimize it that way. But I do recommend, as I said, if it's critical and it's on drive C, scan drive C from another computer, right? Pull it out and deal with it that way. So let's go ahead with that warning and click on install. Okay, install has completed, so I can click on start now, but also check out this bit here. Offline installer is saved in and then it gives you a path, right? So if you need to install on a computer that is not on the internet, right? So you may have some computers in your office that aren't online uh, for security reasons. Once you install on any online system, the offline installer, the full offline installer will be at this path, right? So uh, that's an important fact for people who do have computers of concern off the net. But we can go ahead here and click on start now. Now a browser here has opened up. Uh, just to give you a bit of information about the licensing, etc that uh, you can buy into if you need to recover more than 100 megabytes. So I will just minimize that for the moment. And here we have just beneath the browser is the full Wondershare Recover It interface here. So this is the partition that I need to scan, right? So by default, Drive C has been selected. I'm gonna click on that partition. Right. If what you're trying to scan is an external device, it would be listed down here. Otherwise, you can choose actual folders, etc. And there are 
uh, some other advanced recovery options, but they're not available until you license the software. But let's go ahead and choose the partition where uh, all the files have been deleted and the recycle bins been emptied and I need to recover those. So I'm gonna click on start. And it's gonna do a, a scan of the full partition. Now this is a fairly small partition uh, so the scan was very fast. If you were scanning a drive C or something equally complex, uh, that could the scan could take quite a while. So I do have some results here, 117 files found, right? And uh, some notes to read about the file system. Different file systems include different data. Please check all folders. So what they mean by that is here we have NTFS is one file system and it's found uh, data related to that file system. They have found some raw files here. If there was a, a FAT tables on the partition, uh, we might have NTFS and FAT or FAT32 tables uh, data, right? Um, so depending on your scenario and what's been found, you, you may have more than one uh, recovery area. You want to be expanding both of those, right? And um, they're just making a note here that uh, anything labeled lost location uh, refers to files without file path, which will be placed in that folder. OK, so once we've read that, we say got it. Now, on the left is the tree where we can expand and discover what we have found. Now, here's the recycle bin off of that um, partition. And I can see immediately that some of the areas that I am concerned with the folders are here. So I'm going to select that folder for recovery, right? This templates folder, I want that as well, right? If I click there, I can see some of the bits here. I can see I have an Adobe Illustrator file there. That's great. Stock photography, that's one of the folders and the subfolders are there, right? And um, if you need more room to view, you can hover over the edge here. And when the cursor goes into the double arrow bit, you can pull that across, right? You can see the tree more, right? So we have different bits here. Now, uh, one of the great things about this is that you can preview some of the files uh, and see if they're actually recoverable. So, because what, what happens at times is that you will uh, see the file name, uh, there's that much information available to recover it, but the actual data of the file itself has been overwritten. So let's see if we click here. Well, we do have, we are getting full previews, right? So these look like they're going to be fully recoverable, which is great, right? Um, okay, we have that purchased bit there. So, uh, you know, system volume information, there's rarely going to be, if ever, something personal in there. You can always check it, of course. Oh, here we go. Here's another folder that I want to recover, right? A spreadsheet that I have. Um, let's see if I can load that. Okay, so here's a case where it's a corrupted or incomplete file, right? So we'll close that off. Now that's looking at the NTFS uh, data. We have the raw files. And this is where, if you're not finding what you want here, uh, this is a really interesting area because it gives you the actual extensions, right? You, you will often, as in these cases, you'll lose the actual file name, right? Because I definitely didn't have anything named as zero, 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 whatever, however many number of zeros, six or eight, right? But um, that's because of the way the recovery process goes. It can it finds the raw file, it identifies the blocks that it's in, and, uh, you know, determines that there's a fair chance of recovery. Um, but it doesn't have any of the information like the file name, etc. right? So, um, you know, you may just want to select that whole area and grab everything possible, right? 
um, you may not if you're looking at like a drive C scenario where there would be hundreds of thousands of files there. In that case, if it specifically pictures that you're looking for, say, you know, if we unselect that, you might just want to go through and, you know, JPEGs and GIFs. Uh, I don't see any other. Oh, here we go. PSD Photoshop documents. That's another picture format. So you may just want to select the formats that um, you know you're aware that you're looking for, right? PDFs would be a, another. You know, uh, actually, all of these uh, in this case, pretty much. Uh, yeah, they would all be useful. There's nothing weird system type stuff here. So um, you know, there's there's an opportunity right there to to get some of these numbered but uh, the format has been identified so you don't know the file name but you can always open them up if they're uh, you know not too corrupt and grab them that way so um, now this may be more than probably is with the number of files I've selected more than a hundred megabytes of data to recover so what I'm going to do is click on the active button here which you can uh, think of as an activate button. And uh, if you still have that browser open, you may want to go ahead and you know, make a purchase. There's one month, one year, and lifetime licenses. So be aware that there's uh, gradations there. And if you think there's any chance, of course, that you may use it more than once in your lifetime, um, you know, jumping from 45.95 to 69.95 isn't a huge leap to get a lifetime instead of a month, right? So um, I have a license. I'm going to put that in. I'll just pause the video to do that, and then we will return. Okay, so that is fully activated, and I am now going to click on the recover button, all right? So here we have the chance to select a path to save files. So again, let's talk a little bit about um, you know the strategy here. Uh, you can't recover to the same drive, right? Like you don't. If you're recovering from drive C, you can't recover to drive C. You know you need to put it on another device, right? So if you're recovering from a main drive, you're going to need a, a, a fairly large, you know, if there's a lot of data that you have to get, um, you'll want a large external drive or whatever, or, or another large internal drive. You need a, a decent destination, right? So uh, in, in my case, of course, I can use drive C because uh, it's E that I'm recovering from. So I'm going to, I have a service folder here. I will put in... Uh, I'll just call it recovered. Right. And I will choose recover. Okay, so it immediately opens up in Explorer um, the recovered data, right? So here's that recovered folder. In that folder, I have a recover it folder with the date and time so um, we can track exactly uh, you know when the recovery was made um, I can expand this window here so here's the NTFS files right so this is uh, that spreadsheet let me just give that because that was said to be uh, yeah okay so I just wanted to double check um, that one is corrupted because that's what it reported I was just hoping otherwise and then here we have let's try this zip file extract that yep perfect so that's they're both there let's preview this picture perfect all right so that's wonderful and I had some public domain images. All the thumbnails are there, so I assume, yep, the pictures are fine. And templates. Let's see if this one is all right. Perfect. 
Okay, and what else do we have here? We had the raw files, right? So under JPEG. Okay, I think there might be a few more here than I got elsewhere. I don't remember seeing the dragonfly. Anyway, that's good. Okay, so so we do have, um, you know, some PDFs, and you would just go through these numbered files and see, uh, you know, if they're valid or not. Try and open them. Hopefully they open, and once they're open, you can identify which file it is and how important it is and save it under a new name or simply rename it, whichever uh, makes more sense to you, right? So so that's great. We have successfully recovered uh, a large percentage of the files that were lost. Um, now here in this case, say it says recycle bin, that's a bit confusing, right? Because that's where they were found, but that's not actually a recycle bin. So let's, um, we'll cut those, we'll go up a level, paste them down, and then the recycle bin is empty, right? So, or the recycle bin folder, and then I can just go ahead and delete that. And then I've got more of an actual uh, collection of the files that I am looking for. Hopefully that helps you to recover data from your computer. And uh, if you have any comments, of course, please feel free to leave them below.